Okay, why is Michael Gove's announcement about the civil service shake-up ironic? Well, I think it's for a number of reasons. He's asking the right kind of question, which is essentially why is it that British people have lost confidence and lost trust in British politicians? But his solution, the wrong answer that he comes up with, is actually reinforcing the problem that he's outlined. Let me try and explain very quickly what I mean. My name's uh, Dr Hugh McCartney. I'm an Associate Professor of Political Economy and I've written a set of books and articles over 10-15 years about the British economy and its ruling classes. And the right question that Michael Gove poses is why is it that people in the UK have such little confidence and such little trust in the civil servants or civil service and elected officials? And that is absolutely the right kind of question to be asking. There are a whole range of surveys and some of the results are actually kind of laughable. Um, they suggest things like, for example, and this is not just the UK, this is across a, a set of Western countries, but the UK is kind of at the forefront of some of this, that people trust their hairdresser. People trust an average person on the street that they've never met before more than they trust their elected politicians and uh, uh, policy makers. And Michael Gove's answer is that this is a problem of groupthink. That basically people at the top of policy making, they all come from the same place and they all think the same way. And he thinks this is the real cause of the problem, that it's caused this detachment between the elected officials and the civil service and people out there in the UK. Now, the question is right. The answers, I would say, are wrong for a number of reasons. There are all sorts of reasons why people lack trust now in British policymakers. But I think that probably the foremost one is a whole set of broken promises. Over decades now, politicians of both sides of the uh, political spectrum have made promises to the British public that they haven't delivered on. Those broken promises are part of the right answer to the question of the lack of trust. But the problem is that Michael Gove's solution to the problem he identifies actually reinforces the problem. His logic goes something like this. If we get more pro-Brexit civil servants and more pro-Brexit politicians in politics, then we'll be able to deliver Brexit. And in delivering Brexit, we'll be able to deliver great benefits to the people who have lost out over the years. And in delivering great benefits to them, we'll win public trust again. The irony here is that a whole range of the experts that he now sort of cites and invokes have highlighted the economic damage that is likely to come from Brexit. And not just that, but the fact that the people who are already marginalised will be on the receiving end of the Brexit aftermath. Not only that, but talking about any of this in the post-Covid environment is probably the last thing that businesses want, which makes it doubly, doubly ironic in a sense. But the problem that I see is that Michael Gove is using nice language for an entirely self-serving goal. And to be brutally honest as well, I also think that there's an element of bad politics here, that it's kind of gross opportunism to try and use the COVID scenario and all the racial tensions that we've been living through over the last few years to try to push forward the Brexit agenda.